The sun is bright, our shirts are clean, we're sitting up above the sea. Come on and share this gem with me. Peach or plum or strawberry, any kind is fine. You see, come on and share this gem with me. Hey everybody and welcome to the second episode of the Drawing It Out podcast. The podcast where I pick the subject and we draw it out. So grab your favorite drawing utensil and uh, draw along with me. Um, <clears throat> in today's episode we were going to be discussing Steven Universe and um, all the things I love about Steven Universe. Uh, and in today's drawing I am working on a Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim cosplaying as Stevani. Um, one of the things that drew me to Steven Universe was I had a class and I saw one of the freshmen drawing on their desk and they drew this really curvy pinup girl and I was intrigued and I even asked the student if it was her style and she's like, um, well, no, it's, um, based on this character Rose Quartz from Steven Universe. Uh, now this drawing was far and above what you'd ever expect from Rose Quartz. Like it looked like something I probably would have drawn, because it was this scantily clad uh, woman with this big pink hair, uh, wearing nothing but a towel in front of her chest and uh, underwear. And so you know, after about twenty minutes, they. Explained to me what Steven Universe was, and I had just thought it was like another Adventure Time thing. I had seen my kids watch it, um, so they had like um, they turned me around because what they were describing was a lot like um, a Senshi show, a magical girl show, and come to find out later, like Rebecca Sugar, even just, that's how she pitched it. It was a magical girl show with a male antagonist. Um, so, I fell headfirst into that. Uh, I binge-watched all the first season, tried every resource I could to watch the rest of the seasons. Um, and it's now probably one of my favorite cartoons. Um, they've been doing some weird things with the hiatuses lately, and I hope that doesn't, you know, mean doom or in gloom for the show. Um, because I want to see a lot of where it's going to go. They've introduced some cool things with Lars and the off-colors, and they've introduced a bit of intrigue as far as to what the actual death of um, Pink Diamond is. And I have a few theories about that. Um, and they kind of accused who I'm pretty sure did it, which was Yellow Diamond. And they didn't do anything to dispel that in the most recent two-part episode, where they show the way Yellow Diamond treats Pink Diamond, at least in the dream Stevani was having. Um, so I'm super excited to see where that goes. Uh, this show is great, because it... It's a show where all of the, it, most of the action and adventure happens off screen, and you're left with the aftermath or just the regular slice of life events of Steven, where he kind of just basically goes around, tries to see the best in everybody, and tries to help out. Um, and a lot of times does so unsuccessfully. But, you know, that's kind of life. I like the, I like that. Um, you know, a lot of the other things that drew me to the show was it reminds me of all the things that I loved about anime and manga as it's these really surreal stories. Or these are not surreal, but these really ordinary stories that have just these elements of the surreal. Um, I really like the way that it's a little bit about a boy who's trying to deal with death. You know, he has this mom that he'll never get to know. 
um, except for through the stories of others. And that's a really cool dynamic. You know, a boy his age, you'd think, you know, would rely deeply on his mob. And some of the things I want to know is, like, why doesn't he live with Greg, or why doesn't Greg live with him? You know, I get he's a gem, or at least he's part gem, but the gems aren't always at the at the beach house. They're off fighting monsters and corrupt gems, which is a storyline that I feel has fallen off. I feel like they don't fight enough corrupt gems these days. <laughs> um, I mean, they did fight a pretty big gem when Jasper and Perry showed up. But I feel like, uh, I feel like they don't do a lot of those pilot episode type tropes. Um, but that, that's fine. They, they can spend all day just focusing on Steven doing wacky things or, you know, Lars trying to be a cool kid or Onion. I could watch Onion for days. <laughs> that kid is crazy. Um, when they introduce Onion's house, <laughs> I like that Steven finds that there's like a small room in one of the more recent episodes. They were trying to find Steven, or not Steven, they were trying to find Onion, and Onion had been kidnapped. But Steven says to Sour Cream, have you even checked his, uh, his hidden room, and Sour Cream's, oh, you mean his office? <laughs> and it's like, this little kid's got an office? That's so wacky. It's like what you think Ste Stewie from Family Guy should be. <laughs> or maybe what Stewie from Family Guy wants to be. Onion seems very mischievous. Um... Characters like I love besides Steven are like Lars and Sadie. They ha seem to have this like romantic connection, or at least Sadie's got this kind of love for Lars. It's not being reciprocated because he's too busy being a cool kid <laughs> or trying to be cool for the cool kids. And when Lars goes missing and Steven comes back, I, it's awesome that she, like, becomes a cool kid, <laughs> and is now the front leader of the band, and I hope they explore that more, um, so I'm gonna be really sad if for some reason they end the show, um, yeah, so in this, um, drawing I'm doing, uh, of Ramona Flowers cosplaying as Stevani. Um, I chose Ramona Flowers uh, from Scott Pilgrim specifically because there's a lot of the same elements and design elements of the two um, of the show and that book. You know, you've got this nice, super smooth anime inspired style. And you've got these characters that are dealing with the dimensions and they're trying to live life and navigate life, but they've also got these powers. Um, and I find that really cool. And I also wanted to tie them together because there's some star iconography, especially with Steven's shirt and a few of the gems like Amethyst leggings have stars. And Ramona's bag, which leads to the um, subspace highway, uh, has that star on it. Very iconic star. And so I thought that would, might, that would make a good mix. Um, and I've recently, Mondo released these figures, which I couldn't help myself. I bought... Um, two variants of um, they played it with the colors and I was like well why didn't I just apply Steven's golden red colors to Ramona's uh, scheme and Ramona wears a jacket and Stevani in the most recent 
stranded two parters wearing her uh, wearing Connie's dad's jacket. So I was like, oh, that works perfect. I almost thought about where um, Connie's dad's patch was doing the X Men patch that uh, Scott wears, but I wanted it to be a little more close to that character. Um, so I hope you guys really like this. Um, one thing you'll see a lot of in my digital drawing as we go forward is I use color line art um, instead of using black. Um, and that's just basically to, you know, break up the form, not give it too many hard edges. And it brightens the picture up a little bit. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of gives me a little bit of uniqueness. I know I'm not the only person that uses colored line art, but uh, I really dig it. <clears throat> and I hope you guys do, too. Um, in this artwork, you'll notice that, or at least in this video, you'll notice that I uh, make decisions and then unmake them. And most people would probably edit those out, but I'm not afraid to show you guys that I fuck up. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you guys aren't afraid to fuck up in front of people as well. You know, we're all human beings. That's life. You know, Steven messes up all the time in the show. And, you know, he rolls with it. Like, if Steven hadn't messed up, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have pumpkin. <laughs> um... We would have never gotten a watermelon, Steven. Uh, one of my favorites is Catfinger, Steven. But I think that was more of Amethyst mess up. Um, yeah. So, another thing that, like, uh, drawn my attention to the show is they have, uh, you know, there's lots of subtle references to anime um, in one of the episodes where like Pearl's trying to be cool to impress this girl that's very obvious like a rose analog and that character even like I wonder if like she dyed her hair if Pearl would have had the same reaction Scott has to Ramona dyeing her hair um, but in that episode, they have a return of Stevani, and they have, like, an initial D type drift down the road, and even the car that they're driving, um, I think Rebecca Sugar on the Steven Universe podcast mentioned that it was, like, a real car, like, an amalgam of a real car she had, um, but it's very much like the same car that... TK drives an initial D. I'm thinking it's TK. God, it's been so long since I read that ma that manga. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, the design of Pearl is very like a uh, Tezuka design. Uh, if you ever watched any of the old Astro Boy. Or any of the Cyborg 99. Duke is very um, fond of drawing these very slim characters with these like pointy comb noses. And that was another thing I really dug. I was like, wow, I love these old school references. They weren't like modern anime. Like, we're not getting Yuri on Ice references. We're not getting Soul Eater. We're getting like Ron Mahaf, Tenchi Muyo. We're getting Dragon Ball in the Jungle Moon episode. There is several instances where Stevani is interacting with the wildlife around her. And it's just like the first season of Dragon Ball Z where Piccolo takes Gohan and trains him. Or is like pre preparing him to get trained. And he's just watching him, and Gohan's just doing all this crazy stuff, like he's trying to survive, and then he's pissing off dinosaurs, 
and Stevani kind of pisses off this mother penguin thing, and the way it chases her down the the way just reminded me of Gohan running from the dinosaur. Which, that, I don't know if that's specifically a reference to that, or if it's more of a reference to Goku running from dinosaurs. Um, I dig it all the same. And, you know, if any of you guys notice any anime references I'm not noticing, or if I'm completely wrong, feel free to tell me in the comments. These are just my thoughts and opinions. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like that stuff. Um, oh, also, I'd love to see whatever you guys are drawing with me tonight. Um, and feel free to link that on Instagram or on the Facebook. Um, that's gonna, that'll be super sweet to see what you guys come up with. And you don't have to draw everything from the theme. You can draw whatever you want, but, you know, if you draw from the theme, sweet. Um, but yeah, no, I really dig the the Dragon Ball reference, and if that's not a Dragon Ball reference, well, it seemed like one to me. Um, I think I talked about this already. Um, I record this podcast a few times, but um, I like that there's like a Robotech reference with Stevani in the plane. Um, another thing I noticed with especially... The Connie and Steven dynamic and the Rose and the Pearl is that is all very much like the relationship in uh, Revolutionary Euro Utena, which that's been so long, so I'm not even going to start saying names. <laughs> and I didn't put those two together uh, until watching Rebecca Sugar in, like, a Comic-Con interview, she had a Revolutionary Girl Utena jacket on, and I was like, oh, yeah, that makes all of the sense. Rose cords, Utena's got that pink hair, and the sword. It all makes sense now. <laughs> um, which, if you're really into Magic magic Girl shows, that's a show to watch. Uh, that and Sailor Moon, I can't say that enough, or even, um, if you like newer stuff, Monica. I just recently got into Monica, and that is the most messed up, um, magical girl anime. <laughs> um, you know, if you can't stand the hiatuses between Steven, they seem to be super long. And that's a bit upsetting, because a lot of shows, when they take super long on hiatuses or breaks... That usually means Cartoon Network's fading them out. And I hope we don't see that. Um, recently they announced Teen Titans getting a movie. I want a Steven Universe movie. Someone give me a Steven Universe movie. <laughs> that would be super sweet. Um, yeah, where, yeah. Um, another thing that I really dig about the show is the way they tackle relationships. Um, I love the relationship that Connie and Steven have. Um, they, they're calling it a best friend relationship, and I think maybe that's just because it's a kid. But you can kind of see that they love each other. The way Steven um, tries to get Connie back is... Very much like a boyfriend who's messed up and doesn't doesn't want to lose his girlfriend and Connie is very much just mad because Steven made a decision without her, which if you've ever been in a relationship, you know what that's like. Um, I love the Garnet um, Ruby Sapphire. Um, connection. I I was raised with a um, lesbian sister, so I love the way that they appreciate or not appreciate, but they approach gay um, uh, Sephoric relationships, like even Lapis and Perry. 
Um, but we can talk about that more at another time. Uh, I'm going to wrap this episode up. Um, I have attached some, Im- some images at the end that are uh, more Steven Universe stuff. The It's the finished version of this mixed with the uh, Lars of the Stars image I initially drew for this podcast, but um, the video record messed up, so I didn't get to do that. Um, I've also got a Rose Quartz, Rosie the Riveter reference, which is actually a concept from Rebecca Sugar. I guess it was a warm-up that she had done and posted on Instagram. I was like, oh, I like that. I don't think I've seen anybody do that, so I'm going to do that. That's it for tonight's episode. My name is Jesse. I am the Red Bear in Red Bear Illustration. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Drawing It Out podcast. Um, the intro song is the jam song uh, featuring Stephen and Connie, and the end song is Scott Pilgrim by Plum Tree. Next episode, we will be discussing X Men, the cartoon, the movies, and the future of the franchise. Um, and I'll be drawing a storm in a Super 90s cross colors pinup. Have a good evening, and we'll see you next episode.